It has been a long time since we left our protagonist Van Diathavan. We stayed in Tanjavur for a long time. A few days seems like a long time. Within a few days, Van Diathavan had walked along the coast of Eshet and reached the town of Madoda on the banks of the Palavi River. Amanagara, which was situated on the coast of Ela beyond the Sea of Ramaswaram, was now surrounded by thick oases of green trees, as it was during the time of Thirunanasamba and Dar and Sundaramurthy. Flour, jackfruit, coconut, kamuk, cattle, and sugarcane flourished all around the banks. Monkeys were swinging on those trees. The beetles hatched, the binglies spoke up. Smiley face, the waves of the sea crashed against the fort walls of the city and made a roaring sound. From the large wooden ships to the small boats in the harbour of the city of Madota stood close by. The goods unloaded from them were piled high. All these were the same as they were during Samba and Dar Sundarar's time but some other changes were seen. In the streets of Madota city, one does not see much crowd of servants going to Kethswara temple now. Warriors were now seen wherever the devotees were ecstatic with the chanting of the Lord. Warriors with knives and shields, swords and spears in their hands wandered about. The city has been a war center for more than a hundred years. The troops that came from Tamil Nadu to fight in Elam mostly landed there. The returning troops also embarked there. The city changed hands several times. Sometimes it was with Sri Lankan kings and sometimes with Pandian kings. It came under the rule of the Cholas from the time of Emperor Parantaka. One day Vandiyadeva came and stood at the gate of the fort wall of Suchyada Kendra city. He said to go into the city. He said he wanted to see the Chola commander. The guards refused to let him in. On that, he used the tactics he used earlier in Katapur here also. He forced the guards and tried to enter. The guards captured him and took him to the fort chief. Vandiyathevan told the fort commander that he had brought an important leaf to Prince Aroma's Hivarma and that he could tell the details about it to the Chola commander. They examined him. They found him to have a leaf for Pani's wealth and a palm leaf from Palyavur. Bhutavikrama Kesari, the great velar of Kajumbalur, was then the commander-in-chief of the Sri Lankan army. They went to him and told him. Bhutavikrama Kesari was talking to the Prime Minister Aniruthapramarayar at that time. He was ready to go with him till Ramaswaram. So he left saying that he would come back and inquire and keep the warrior in custody till then. Then they took Vandiyathevan and locked him in a room in a dilapidated mansion. They also posted a guard at the door. Vandiyadeva was tired from his long journey, so he rejoiced at his imprisonment. A couple of days of leisurely relaxation, right? On the first day he had such a rest. But on the second day there was a problem. He started hearing strange noises in the room next to his. Someone threatened another person. His heroic speeches were magnificent. Inda. Chichi, go away, don't come near. I'll kill you if you come near, I'll crush you. Beware. Your life is not your own. I will send you to hell, one kick will take your life. There was a man in the next room. I don't know who he is arguing with like this. Only one voice was heard, but no counter voice was heard. It was suspected that maybe someone was a crazed war hero. If so, will you do it all night without sleep? If you can sleep a little peacefully, that too has been disturbed. Won't you listen? Won't you just go away? Okay, okay. Look what I'm doing to you. After these words something fell in his room. Vandiyadeva, who was lying down, threw himself up and got up. He stared at what had fallen. Immediately he laughed without realizing it. He laughed merrily because he knew that it was a cat that fell so fast from the next room. Ooh! Do you know anything else to laugh at? Siri! Siri! Don't come here again! Said the voice. No doubt someone is crazy. Otherwise would you argue with the cat so much? Or do you think that cats laugh like humans? But an even more surprising thing was that he doubted that the voice that spoke like that was a voice that he knew. It seemed like a voice heard somewhere, sometime. But whose voice? 
Where did you hear the voice? Thinking about it, I can't remember. Vandiyathevan lay down thinking that there should be some way, there should be someone. He closed his eyes and tried to sleep, but could not sleep. After a while something smooth tapped on his solace. When he opened his eyes, the cat was lying there. Oh God! How do you sleep with this on your leg? He kicked and pushed. The cat moved on. He lost his sight, again something soft tapped his hand at his side. When he opened his eyes, the cat was lying next to him and petting him. Again he held him by the hand and pushed him. The cat went away. He closed his eyes again. The cat lay down on the head and started rubbing his forehead with its tail. A warrior who could bear sword and work fearlessly could not bear the experience of being stroked by a cat with its tail. Getting up, he lifted the cat by its neck. At the top of the wall between his room and the next room there was a bit of rubble. He threw the cat through it. In the next room there was silence for a while. A cat's purr accompanied the call of a human voice. After a while go. Away. A voice was heard. The cat's meow meow sound disappeared after a short distance. Then there was silence. Vandiyadeva was stunned. He had a dream while half asleep. A very pleasant dream. The younger brat squatted down beside him and rubbed his forehead. Aha! What a difference between a cat's tail and a princess's finger. Suddenly he woke up again. I was sad that the dream was over. Someone knocked on the wall from the next room, that must be crazy. Who's there? Who took the cat and threw it? Vandiyadevan did not reply. He was silent. Cow. What is this, the sound of a cat purring again? No, no. Someone is trying to climb the wall over there. Vandiyathevan did not wake up. He was listening attentively while lying down. But before treading cautiously, the hand was on the knife hilt. From the top of the wall, two hands were first seen in Pakai. Then a truncheon appeared. A face came up from under the foreskin and looked down. Cow! Isn't he a genius? His appearance has changed a little because he has a turban. But there is no doubt that all were Kadian. Why and how did he come here? We should have come knowing that we exist. Are you here to help? Or come to disturb? Vandiyadeva sat up and said, O Vira Vaishnava! Come! Come! Come to Thirkadeswaram, the place of Shiva! Come! He said. Brother! Is it you? I thought. Who else could sit so childishly silent? All Workadian said and jumped in the room.